Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, before we get this episode started, also, <laughs> I wanted to sound like a YouTuber, that's why I started off with, hey everyone, like, subscribe below, you know how YouTubers are. Okay, but before we get started, I want you to know we are going extra big with the all-star season of Vulnerability Time podcast, so guess what? We got video podcast, so click in the episode description below if you wish to watch the video of the podcast as well. It'll be a YouTube link, so you can go ahead and get it going and get watching it. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe below. <laughs> Such a YouTuber, right? Anyways, folks, enjoy the episode. It took me, like, forever to even choose one. That's why I was, like, procrastinating. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's... So. I'm loving the ones that you did choose, you know, like social media and how it's not meant to be, or how it was like, the yeah. purpose of it was not meant to be authentic, unfortunately. And then also people are out here dying. It's trying to help, it's time to help them, you know. Um, yeah. Um, yes. Oh, okay, but before we get into it, um, first of all, welcome back to another episode of Vulnerability Time. I am your host, Josias Abril. With us, we have a queen. A queen. <laughs> okay, okay, so, okay, so before, like, like, I further introduce you, okay, I want to finish our combo that we were having before this, so, you said what is happening this month. Also, um, folks, this is this episode is currently being recorded during Hispanic Heritage Month. So, happy Heritage Month to me and the Queen mm -hmm. Rosa Rosalia. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just tripped. Thank you. Puerto Rican, and your uh, what's your nationality? I am actually Mexican, and I'm actually not even first generation Me Mexican. I'm technically considered still an immigrant or a naturalized citizen. Yeah. So my son right now is considered first generation. Oh, period. Okay, okay. And, uh, and he's a mixed baby, so. Yes, we love that. Altered. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. I, I miss you. I miss uh -huh. you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Okay, so what's happening this month? Okay, so most importantly, I, finally um went through some paternity testing as a as a formality for my son's father mm -hmm. and i am so excited because you know th there's this man this wonderful man who it just became uh, aware that he's a father you know and not only that, but um, now our worlds are just kind of blending and it's um, a beautiful thing to just kind of kind of see it into fruition, you know, when you are trying to manifest something in your life and you're not seeing it like, like you're like, in, you're like, hello, 3D, get it, you know, and um, it took a lot of faith and prayer um, self-reflection and then like all the the opposite from that as well to um kind of cope with not being able to talk to um you know a significant other that is also like your son's father you know mm -hmm. so that's one thing and then another thing would be traveling to go see him something that i haven't really done much because of pregnancy yeah and um and then my birthday so just, you know, celebrating birth again. Yes. <laughs> right. And then, um, you know, Dia de los Muertos and Halloween. And, um, you know, everything that comes with the fall time, the, the winter clothing. And, yeah, just excitement to be around family and friends again. You know, just, um, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> And you're currently vacationing in Mexico at, at the time of this recording, right? Yes. Well, I would say more like living, but I'm a, 
but I'm a dual citizen. So it's, you know, um, I was born over here in Mexico, naturalized in the U.S. And um, yeah, just with everything going on, I figured um, what better way to lay low, be closer to family and um, yeah, have have help with the baby. And, you know, because when you have a baby and you're becoming a mom and all that, you... It's literally like you're learning on the job. So yeah. it's good to be like around other people that can train you and give you yeah. give you tips and help and along. Support. With them. Right, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So are you doing classes online? Well, in the thinking? summer, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, Harvard Medical School paid for my MCAT prep. Yeah. $3,100 worth of MCAT prep and a tutor. Yeah. And your girl didn't even get to do it because of one, ADHD meds weren't in place. Two, yeah. my family doctor, um, let's leave it at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, oh. and, and then like just dealing with the baby, like, um, it's a lot going on. Yeah, like with a baby just having to be up and ha- not having a regular sleep schedule. And again, with the whole ADHD and then to not have studied while I was pregnant. And, I'm, you know, e- even though it's like my element, I'm not at that. Cal- I don't feel like I'm at that caliber right now. Right. And then, um, you know, it's all timed and everything. But I can go back to it, reset it and all that. But um yeah, that was the only thing that I had right now because I am a senior still. So yes. hopefully once things start like coming in financially, then I'll start taking right. care of, you know, my school. Right, exactly. And, you you know what I mean? Like I said, like grouping my life yeah. with my baby and then right. his dad. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got time. And you're almost finished <laughs> anyway. You got time. Yeah, no. Yes. And... Um, I was definitely scared about like some time. T- I get anxious about the timeline that I was giving myself, but. Oh, yes. Like, mm. then I, I've been looking kind of like backtracking my education and it's like, well, there was just so, ra- so much randomness throughout all of it that um, there's really, you can't really, like the time part, you can only plan like so much. Right. But, so. You already have your thesis and like most of your dissertation done because we were McNair Research Scholars. Right, and you know what's weird too? I finished the post back before my undergrad. So it's, I'm like in a weird yeah. like position right now, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that. that's another thing, you know? Like I don't want to let go of that McNair status yeah. and well, everything that comes with, with it. Once we're it, we're there right. forever. Throw it right. on your resume. Throw it on your right. resume. All right. Uh, but utilizing it to the, my full capability, right. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like really, really s- juicing out everything that I can, you know, yeah. get from that. So, yes. Like for every experience, you know, and especially that one. So, right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I miss you. And you look I'm good. Too. You look gorgeous. You too. You too. You like, like, like I, I miss you, and I wish I had like all my friends like right here. But it's like yeah. I know, I know you're out there doing your thing too, and like to be, to be doing like a podcast too. It's like next level social engagement. You know what I mean? Thank because you. what I'm looking at, like you know, when you look at your stories on whatever. And you're really like, well, you know, maybe there's like family, friends, yeah. school people, coworkers, and you're like, I just want to, like, it's surface level, but you want to dive in much deeper, you know, or that's how I feel. And it's just yeah. you feel like you never have enough time or something, but you know, the fact oh. that you actually make time, you know what I mean? And even though it's it's not even like in your face either, like. You made me want to like look forward to it, you know. You yeah. know. You were literally gonna make me cry. Oh my and god! And like, whenever I was looking at your stuff the other day, whenever I was like, 
oh, when you were like texting. And I started texting you, um, Trenton came up. Yes. Ew. And then I was like, I was like, do you have three names or four? Or I was like, two? I was like, what? Oh my I was God. like, I was like, uh. <laughs> I'm like, so glad. Like pieces of you that I still want to like know, even though yeah. it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like you might have said something on social. You did put it up, right, on social media. Yeah. But it, it didn't even like cross my mind that it was like a whole change or something. Yeah. yeah. That it was like a legal change. Right. So, I'm so glad I got rid of that name, Trenton. That means and trauma. <laughs> you know, you know why I also had a very like personal connection to it recently yeah. was because whenever I was naming my son, he right now has my my last name. Yeah. And now that I'm talking again to his dad, mm -hmm. I suggested we'd add his name yeah. or, you know, like, yeah. Just, Where are you it, planning to do the uh, name change? Are you planning to do it through, um, like, when you're, like, in the state of Texas? Where, like, yeah. Texas. Okay, because Texas's name change process is very easy compared to, like, California and Indiana. So, yes, I would definitely say, you know... Um, so, it wasn't that hard whenever you were trying to, like, change it all across the board? Like, right. your license, your social, your insurance etc okay so how it works is the name changes first and once the judge signs the document you can then take it to you know your insurance company or your driver's license place um and get your name changed that way but um the cool thing about it is is that there's like a huge massive grace period because, like, mm -hmm. they know you won't be able to change everything in the snap of a finger. But mm -hmm. um, the thing that is quick is the actual name change. Like, once the judge signs it, it is official. That is your new name. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that your other name isn't valid. Right. That doesn't mean your other name is invalid. Your old name is invalid. You know what I mean? Because obviously right. still documents are on there. You can't get a new name on your birth certificate unless you have proof that the doctors at the hospital messed up your name. Um, but other than that, like the whole, just the name change in general, phenomenal. Like it's very easy. The reason why it took me so long is because I don't have a car <laughs> um, anymore. <laughs> I sold it. But um, also, um, yeah, like for me, my next move is to get my, my new uh, driver's license, which I'm gonna get in like a couple weeks. Um, then it's to get my new social security and then I, I'm planning on like changing my name on my insurance probably in like four or five months from now. So like, you know, it, it, yeah, everything is still yours mm -hmm. pretty much. And in the, like, I don't know if you've seen like on app, job applications, like I know I've seen this on a lot of like federal mm -hmm. job applications. They ask what's your current legal name and then they ask what are any other names that you use? So. Mm -hmm the government still recognizes both names as you. It's just one is your like new legal name, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like changing your last name. You know, you're still recognized under that old name, but it's like now on every document and the government um, will now refer to you as your new name. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. The point is, overall, do it through Texas. It's easy. And literally, if you need any help, I'm so serious. The process is so easy. I want to help. It's so easy. It's okay, so bet. Easy. And you're doing it for a yeah. minor. And, um, yeah, and my baby's only four months old, almost yeah. five. Yeah. So, as long as you're not, like, 18, mm -hmm. it's, it's even easier than if you're over 18. It's... Yeah, just don't go to California and do it. You, you will give up, trust me. <laughs> why, why are you referencing California, though, and not, like, another state? Because, now, don't worry, because I do not, like, agree. It's, well, I, the reason why I mentioned the California is because from the research that I have done, it was, it looked like it was the hardest one to get your name changed. Um, it's, like, almost impossible. And I was like, y'all don't need all that money for someone to change their name. They don't need to pay $900 to get 
to change their name. You know, um, Indiana, it's kind of difficult, but from the research that I have done, it seems like California is the most difficult. And it frustrated me because I don't know why queen that I like was researching other states before the state of Texas, but it drove my str I love California, but I don't know. I just didn't like the name change process. I think it was very <laughs> necessary. I don't know. So every, every, every time I just mention it, I don't know why, but I also mention it to also highlight how great Texas is. Aww. Yes. Okay. That. So yes. There's something that you mentioned earlier. Mm hmm. Um, about like the Instagram stories and stuff like that. And it kind of like leads into like the topic that you chose about like, you know, social media and it, you know, not being meant for. What was the exact title? Give me one second. Let's, let's see what it was. It was social media is not meant to be authentic. Yeah, like, that's the thing, like, when it comes to my Instagram page, I started, re and I started realizing that, um, I was not fitting my, like, I, my, ins I was not, like, how about this, let me rephrase it, my Instagram, um, was not being me, necessarily, like, it came to a point where I realized I don't want to fit my Instagram. I want my Instagram to fit me. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, like, I try to, like... And there's nothing wrong with just, like, posting, you know, like, just random photos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's great. You know, for me, though, personally, for me, I just saw that when I do that, it was affecting me because I feel like I wasn't being authentic to what my goal coming into social media started to be. Right. Um, and I think that's like one key thing about social media is that even though we all may be doing social media for the same reasons, mm -hmm. we all aren't really putting the same purpose like behind it, you know? Right. Like right now, like I've ha had in the past where I was kind of like documenting my life as I was going on, mm -hmm. like, for example, like documenting my process through boarding school. Yes. And that was very chronological, was right? Was this as before or after the hack? <laughs> that was way before. Okay. That was like starting from 2012. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and it was, and that's like sad too, because, um, you don't think that ever hacking is ever going to happen to you right? or that you're going to beat it somehow because you just can recognize um, certain spam or um, right. threats or anything like that that can actually like shut down your stuff. Right. Mm. And there was just so many beautiful moments that I documented over the years that were that had that Instagram like box aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. Like you can kind of relate it to back in the day of having like Polaroids. But when that hack when that hack happened, there were so many moments that were like erased. Mm. And, and it almost gave me like amnesia. And I couldn't even think of what pictures might have been lost. Mm -hmm. And and now that I've had more time to process photos and such like that, um, and things like that, like I remembered I had a hard drive of like two terabytes, you know, buried in my stuff. And I was like, I need to plug this in. I, I need to see what pictures are in it. Cause I would always hog up so many pictures and just put them in that hard drive that I didn't want people to see. Mm -hmm um for whatever reason like you know intimate events with my family that don't that nobody needs to see you know what i mean or i would take so many pictures and i would i would want to get these moments these memories back to my family right. but because right. i was just the way i was taking pictures and stuff it was almost overwhelming to keep up with it in terms of editing and all that because i do come from an artistic background. I've been a graphic designer. I've done college photography and all of that. You know what I mean? So it's like, how can I not overthink 
right. these memories that I'm gonna resurface. Right. You know what I mean? That are like key moments in like people's lives. Like not just mine, but you know. But now, like I said, like this, it's a hard drive and uh, an external hard drive. And then trying to figure out like, why isn't it working? Why isn't it showing up? And how many photos are on that thing, you know? So um, I guess the thing right now that is more parallel to after this hack that I had and my Instagram being wiped off are just like, you know, when you're on your Snapchat or something or your or, or, um, your phone has a setting where it shows you memories yeah. of the past, you forget about these photos. Right. But one pops up and you want to share it. You know what I mean? It may look like it's present, but it's not. It's still you, you know? But, um, you know what I mean? Like, does that make it authentic? Is, is that, you know what I mean? Like, and being authentic is like, in terms of on authenticity, is it real? Yes, it's real. Is it um, in chronological order in terms of how you're living your life? Probably not. Um, and it might be just more like a, of a vision board type of deal where it's like you have this past moment that you want to rev revive into your like now. Yeah. And you and you and the only thing you really know how to like you you know what I mean? You're trying to put it out to the world and it's like, you know, it's already there, but it's like you want you want to do it different. Right. You know what I mean? It's like if you've gone shopping or whatever. So Yeah. You know? Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. See, okay, by the way, when I look down, it's because I'm looking at the time. I gotta like make sure it's still recording. My biggest fear is to mm -hmm. Be recording yeah yes because that happened one time and almost happened a second time but that happened one time and ever since then like i constantly look at the time also when i'm writing something down it's because i'm taking notes because what you're saying is inspiring yeah and how um you can also put like screen record too right like as a double whammy like if you needed like an extra backup or something um, you know i don't know what you mean like for example, let me take a picture. Like, I'm on my iPad right now. Oh, you're on the team of Apple right now. Okay, okay. And then you can oh, always, gotcha. you can, and then you also have all the settings from your phone. Right. So, you know. Thank, I'm gonna look into that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so Queen, I I want to know. Mm -hmm. You pick the topic. People are dying out here. It's time to help them. What does that mean to you? So for me right now, it's actually like I said, like Day of the Dead, mm -hmm. and just the past couple of years leading up to my birthday having people like pass away around my birthday and the things that are going on right now at the border where it's like crazy immigration um and just hearing from my family all the things that go on mm. when people are trying to cross through this particular area of the border um it's so out of hand right now to the point where elon musk came down and he's like doing talks on it and stuff i haven't delved deeper in like um to the extent of how he might help or his opinion on it mm -hmm. but obviously like i don't want to see people suffering in my neighborhood like it, you know what i mean near my hometown or right the area the area where i keep you know i'm i'm from the equal distance so like from the border I'm from Uvalde. I have family in Uvalde or San Antonio and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also oh. the same distance on the other side of the border. Right. So it's like, I, you know, this little border area, it's like, one, it's a natural resource. You know, it's, um, it's an attraction spot in terms of 
what it provides for both sides like international travel business you know right. family expansion growth and it's like to see people suffering and that you know it's people are dying people are suffering and then um you know wanting with me wanting to like learn about medicine and stuff i just don't i don't want people suffering i don't want people to be sad i don't want them to hurt and especially if they're like just you know trying to seek refuge and need help and you know things like that and it's like probably their last resort and if it's not their last resort well they must want it bad enough if they're there under the bridge you know what i mean like yeah so i guess that's where my head is at right now with that and you know and then with talking about like where i'm from in valby texas and then with that recent massacre that happened and 21 people vanishing like that in the blink of an eye and um and then experiencing how my brother was in that and it could have been my brother wow and, you know and he's little he's like 12 he just turned 12 yeah you know so um just things like that you know where you do count your blessings right. you never know when you're going to go right. and like i said with day of the dead coming up i have family members um coming to make their funeral arrangements even though they are not ill even though they um are not suffering and they you know still contemplating death and you know yeah so yeah thank you for sharing that my 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 drop right and then you know what's another thing too like speaking to my kids dad um I've been wanting to mention to him what, like, how his family deals with death and, like, the traditions that they might have, you know, because being Mexican, um, like, my family builds houses on the grave side, you know, and then we all end up, you know, going in there at, like, in a dungeon place, there's caskets and they're like, like a library of caskets underground in a house on a grave site, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I have this like dream of having this giant mansion and palace and my whole family is there. And the closest thing I have that to that right now yeah. is the house at the grave site. Yeah. Because we're all going to end up there somehow or some someday. You hey, know what I mean? Give me one second. Keep talking, but give me one second. I'm going to... Sure. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Screw her. That's okay. We got. A, we talked a lot, so it's good. Like we got a good amount in. So. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I miss you. And I miss so, you too. And if yeah. you ever need anything, just let me know. Thank you, Great. YouTube queen. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll definitely keep in touch and I'll like make an advertisement sound. Sorry, I'll like make an advertisement sound bite and then like send it to you and then like tag you in it when I make it on my, when I put it on my story to give people a little sneak peek. And the episode will probably be airing, like I plan to release the season um, in the month of November or December, so. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> okay, bet. Okay, bye, queen. Bye, love you. Good night. Love you.